everyone. Thanks for joining us on the Twitch. I'm Heto Lessa, a Specialist Solutions Architect, joined with James, our Senior Software Developer, and this is Build on Serverless. If this is the first time you're joining, Build on Serverless is an advanced series for Twitch where we try to build things using the same tools, the same frameworks, the same language, and the same IDEs you are familiar with. So that we can add some opinions to it, and each presenter will probably do it differently, of course. So in today's video, we, it's, a, it's actually a continuation of the previous episode. We are actually building a Twitch, uh, we're building a Twitter processing app where that James can give you all more details now. Up to you, James. Yeah, sure. Um, hi, my name is James Hood. I'm a senior SDE here at AWS. Um, actually, the tech lead of the AWS Serverless Application Repository. And um, I'm going to, what we're going to do today is we're going to build a serverless app using Java and SAM, the serverless application model. And what it does is it actually uses a, uh, another app that's already in the AWS Serverless Application Repository. It's um, called Twitter Event Source. And what our app's going to do is it's going to receive tweets for a certain search, a certain uh, Twitter search. And then it's going to do, it's going to use Amazon Comprehend, which is a pretty cool service for doing sentiment analysis. So it's going to use that service in order to uh, perform sentiment analysis on tweets and then log those to CloudWatch metrics so that hopefully by, by the end, we'll have some graphs up of some metrics and see. Uh, live coding is always fun because things can go well or things can go horribly wrong. So let's see which one today Thanks is. Thanks for here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, honestly, I love it because, uh, one, I love that risk. It's kind of fun. But also, it, I love it because it's like real development. I mean, that's how software development works, right? You, uh, So much frustration happens as part of the process, and it's very normal. And so I kind of love live coding because it's real. You see frustrations, you see things not work, you sometimes have to short circuit and do something different than planned. So yeah, but uh, I really just wanted to get right to it. Um, so, uh, but <laughs> to throw a little monkey wrench in to this plan, um, rather than starting where we left off before, uh, one, I don't know that everybody here was here last time, so I kind of want to start over a little bit. And two, right after we did part one, uh, the Sam, the new Sam CLI was released, and so I want to show that. Um, we spent a lot of time last time talking about structure of a Java serverless application, and now the Sam CLI gives you this one command that just spits out a skeleton app in Java. So I think that's really cool, and I'd like to show that. Yeah. No, cool. So, so, so just, let's just recap very quickly for those who just joined. Now we're gonna show the Java structure later. We're going to get down to code and get down to the SAM CLI very quickly because James already spent most of the time in the previous episode. But yeah, we were just going to touch it quickly. But yeah, we can code. recap. It's just last time we didn't get to a really a working app. So <laughs> I really want to do that this time. So let's let's yeah. focus on getting this app up and working. And then uh, and then if we have time at the end, we can definitely take questions and talk about structure and all that. Um, all right. Awesome. So. On my screen, uh, I just have a terminal in my workspace with all my you know, GitHub repos and all that stuff. And there's a new command. It's called SAM. Um, ATAR, I don't know if you can send out the link to the SAM CLI at some yeah. point during this. Yeah, we, we, but, um, we just sent it. Oh, awesome. So we have the <laughs> SAM CLI. It has a number of different commands. Uh, and the one I'm going to show you right now is init. So you can initialize a new serverless application. Um, so I'm going to use SAM init. Our runtime, we want Java 8. And then, uh, and, and all of these options are documented in help. So what you can see here is that SAM init, um, you can just use it. There are kind of ready templates for each runtime. However, we also have uh, we also have support for cookie cutters and, and other things so that you can you can create your own custom initialization template, which is really fun, really powerful. And there's already yeah. some on our AWS samples uh, as well. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the default uh, SAM init runtime Java 8, and then we're going to call it tweet sentiment. OK. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay, by the way, James, you 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 just shown the Easter egg in the sub init that cookie cutter template is actually advanced ones for Python developers. So if you're a yeah. Python developer and you're watching us, this is your Easter egg. Just <laughs> so now we have tweet sentiment. So so we have a tweet sentiment app. This has been created for us. There's a README that has uh, in there already that kind of gives you an overview of the structure of the application. Um, what we can see is that there's a POM XML. So this is just a, a very simple Maven architecture. And it gets you started with a starter template. More on that later. And if you look at under source, you'll find um, that there's just this really simple hello world app that's created in here. So what I'm James, going to do, yeah. If you run a if you run a tree command, that kind of shows the structure. Unless you're going to bring that up on 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 the IDE later, but up to you. Oh sure, yeah, we can we can show that a little later. Um, right now, I'm going to initialize Git. Uh, so now we have an empty Git repository in here, and let's see what we see here. So I'm going to just create my initial commit. Um, again, the reason for that, oh, sorry, I'm moving a little quickly here. I know there's a bit of a refresh delay. Yeah, it's uh, nice. so I just I'm actually a... trying to watch both, so I can, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I just did my initial commit with the sam init command. Um, I'm going to use git during this because I want to uh, just show that, that uh, or just want to show how this, how I would use this in a normal development workflow. Um, so my next step is that I want to, uh, I need to bring this up. Into your tiny j. Yeah, this might be a little small, but um, uh, let's, let's call this server list. Let's call this tweet sentiment and Let's point it at this new directory that we have. So, workspace, and sorry, I have a bunch of these. Um, let's refresh this, and there's my tweet sentiment. All right, and don't worry, I'll make this bigger in just a minute. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, you, you go and set this up and, you know, create Yeah, so I'm just setting this up. There's a couple things I like to use in my apps. I like to use Lombok, so um, I set up annotation processing right away, or enable annotation processing. Um, this is a Maven repository. Uh, it found this POM XML already. I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to presentation mode so that hopefully this is bigger now. Okay, so it's, you... it's, it's hang on one second, James. It's just catching up on the on on the stream. Yeah. So in the so in the meantime, we catch up on the stream. The sum in its command, just in case you're just trying it right now, it gives you a, it bootstraps a or is scaffolding a project for the lambda runtime we support. So if you do sum in it right now without any parameters, that gives you a Node.js app. You can specify a runtime as Python three, Python two. Go, Java, .NET, all of this, including end-to-end -end packaging, deployment, unit testing for you. So give that a go. All right, James. So I can see the IDE already here. So we yeah. we should be good to go. All right. I'm just getting IntelliJ set up here. And then um, let's see if it's created anything at this point. OK, so now we have some stuff that we probably want to get to ignore. So uh, I'm going to tell it to ignore idea. Um, ML. Oops. I'll fix that later. Uh, Maven uses this target thing. And um, that's just because I throw VI in there sometimes. Um, yeah. I actually, I, on my day-to-day -day basis, I use a website called gitignore.io. That uh -huh. I essentially say, uh, this is the IDE I use, this is the operating system I use for other people that might contribute. And yep. essentially generates a git ignore that this long. 
And that's actually quite powerful. But nice. All right, so let's try this out. Let's see if this actually builds. I just sent the link on the chat in case you are interested in giving that a go. So I use that almost always. Cool. OK, so Sam and Nick created a Java package that built right out of the box. We're ready to go. Um, we have clean Git history. Um, OK, and then OK, so my next step and apologize, I know there's the refresh rate here. Um, my next step is I'm going to pull in a bunch of dependencies, and I'm actually going to cheat because I did this before. <laughs> I learned from last time, and I tried to tried to so, apply some learnings. Uh -huh. So James, let, uh, let's let's slow down a little bit there because I saw you you're, you're switching between screens, so I'm just trying to catch up on those places now. Yeah, okay. um, I'm actually Go. moving a little bit quickly on this on purpose because what I'm doing is I'm just copying a bunch of dependencies okay. over to my app. Okay, so, so Twitch audience, just, just cover your eyes and let's, let's have a chat about some other pieces. Yeah, yeah so, um, so I'm just chatting with some people in the chat. Uh, they, I just shared that uh, git ignore.io. In the meantime, we're doing some of the setup. Yep. Uh, so just some dependencies I like to use. I like to use Project Lombok. It saves a lot of time on boilerplate code in Java. Um, I'm using Dagger. We discussed using that for dependency injection last time. OK, so now I'm going to change. So the default salmonit uh, uses this default group ID. So I'm going to change that um, to Tweet sentiment. I'm going to make this version 1.0.0. And uh, uh, I'll just say uh, performs tweet sentiment. And then, oh, wait, this is just the name. So we'll call this tweet sentiment. All right. Um, all right. And now, um, now we're going to take a look at our SAM template which uh, this is the default template that it sets up. So I'll just add some description, performs tweet sentiment analysis, uh, logs sentiment scores to CloudWatch metrics. Hey, by the way, Diego, I just saw that Diego puts a message on the chat. We're using IntelliJ. There's a plugin for adding Git ignore stuff. Um, cool, thanks Wait. for that link. Uh, in the yeah, meantime, James is just adding some, adding some information. That same template, by the way, gets generated automatically for you by some in it. And all of those comments that you're seeing on the screen right now essentially jumps straight to exactly where in the documentation you can find more information, how you can do those things as well. By property, yeah. by extending the same template, yada, yada. Yeah, and by default, this goes ahead and puts in an API in front of this Lambda function, so you can test it out with API Gateway. In our particular case, we don't really need that, so I'm going to just remove the API information from this template. And at this point, I think we have kind of our basic template. Okay, so we just have this single function. We have this hello world.app. Um, Again, I, I really do want to make this kind of a real world scenario. I'm going to uh, save my work here. So what you can see here is that we've changed our dependencies. So this Palm XML and our template YAML, we have, uh, we can see our changes in Git. Um, so I'm going to just add these. to the git code. Basic template. All right, so now we have that committed. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add this to my, sorry, I, I totally agree with using uh, the git ignore plugins and everything, but just for expedience, I'm just going to manually manage this git ignore. Sure. I think, I think we're hardcore, so we're using the shell all the time, so I, I think we can call ourselves hackers now. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a hardcore command line person. I, I learned Linux in college, and yeah, I love it. It's super fast. 
Um, okay, so now we're going to, uh, let's see. So now I'm going to go ahead and create, um, so Hello World's nice, but really, uh, you know, if this is a real Java app, then we probably want to create something like this, right? So our artifact, or our group ID followed by something for the app, and then, um, so I'm going to create this base package. Let me make this a little bigger. Um, I'm going to create my core logic. Um, I'll just call it tweet sentiment. So just do everything on command line. Um, and this is core tweet sentiment logic. Okay, and then, so, uh, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so in the meantime, the stream is catching up. Uh, so what James is actually doing is, is ignoring the hello world that we created using set in it, which basically has a API gateway and a Lambda function returning a hello world with some additional information. And he's essentially creating the whole structure for the tweet sentiment analysis app. So essentially creating the structure for the Lambda function for Dagger, and more importantly, the way James is doing, it's part of the best practices. Essentially, we, we ask customers and we advise customers to, all your business logic should do exactly as it should, regardless if you're using Lambda or not. And Lambda, in that scenario, we will actually use your libraries, your packages, you name it, and then work in the compute environment that Lambda provides you. So it's a very nice way, a clean way to separate your project. That's for Java, obviously, but we have more episodes on Python, Node.js, and many other languages as well. Yep. Um, cool. So now I have my Lambda handler. So I just wanted to show that in Java, uh, let's see. Oh, I think my dependencies are not automatically. You need to, you need to import that, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to pull up my Maven Projects tab. I'm going to refresh this. And then cool. I think now that it shows up on here, let's see what's going on. Sure. In the meantime, I think Diego is a fan of Gradle. Uh, but I'm not sure. Diego's on the chat, so I'm just kind sure. of a make joke. OK, so now, now that IntelliJ understands this is a Maven project, it pulled in all my Maven dependencies that I have. Um, okay, so my request handler needs an input and an output. In this case, the input's going to actually come from this other app that's in the serverless application repository called Twitter Event Source. Um, and I'll show installing that in just a minute. Um, but we have this request handler. We are going to take, uh, it returns a list of tweets as JSON strings. So, so I'm going to go ahead and take that as an input, and then I don't really need an output for this. So I'll just have a void output. All right, so now this is my actual request, request handler to do something. OK, now I'm going to do a little bit of a little more setup. So again, we're using Dagger. Um, so I'm going to create my DI module class. And then my app component interface. So this is all this is all dagger stuff that we covered last time. Um, or sorry, this is a component that takes in the app module class as input. So this component is what's going to provide me my tweet sentiment class. Um, so in my dependency injection framework. So let's go ahead and take um, So again, we kind of covered this in detail last time. So this is going to return my tweet sentiment. 
object. And for now, it'll just return this new tweet sentiment. Um, the reason why I put all that in was so that I could create my, my initializer. So this needs this tweet sentiment class. And then again, this is dagger. And then out of that component, oops, um, out of that component, I can pull my tweet sentiment class. Uh, and the reason I need that is because here I want to use it to publish uh, sentiment metrics. And these are my tweets as strings. OK. So I'm going to just hold right here for a second. Um, so we have two compiler errors right now. So what this request handler is doing, this is our Lambda entry point. Um, I've used Dagger to do dependency injection initialization. This is how I separate out my business logic into a separate class. Um, there's two compilation errors right now. One is that tweet sentiment, right now it's just an empty class with a to-do in it, so it doesn't actually have this method defined. And the other compilation error is that Dagger, um, so Dagger auto-generates a class at build time, that this Dagger app component class. Uh, so let me, uh, let me fix this one error by creating this method. So I'm going to let IntelliJ help me to create this method. So now I have this published sentiment metrics. Um, this is just a random comment. This is something I love about IDs, especially IntelliJ, compared to using Sublime or VI or that type of thing. It kind of creates this method so yeah. much simpler. It can definitely accelerate <laughs> you quite a bit. Um, yeah. And by the way, no pressure, but I just noticed that we have some AWS folks on the stream as well. I could see Jacob. <laughs> Jacob Fuzz actually making some comments. I know he loves Python, but he's yeah, a long-time yeah. Java programmer as well. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for thanks for joining, Jacob. Well, and that's the that's the awesome thing about Lambda, right? It has runtimes for many different languages. And then when you write, what we'll see later is that the Twitter event source app, which could be written in any language, can interact with this app, written in any language. And it actually really allows for polyglot kind of a polyglot environment. So that's something that's pretty exciting for me. Um, okay, so let's. Uh, we still have the one compilation failure because of Dagger, but actually that should be fixed by the build. It's that code is generated at build time. So let's cross our fingers here and see if this will build, or if there's some other error I'm missing. Hi, and by the way, James, Chris Munn said hello to you. He's hey. also on the stream. So. Hi, Chris. Here's my compilation error. <laughs> um, well, we actually said at the beginning, so this is live coding. So expect things to fail, and let's try to work to, towards resolving them. Yeah, expect the unexpected. So the error I got was that Dagger app component, there's no import for it. Um, so again, this is kind of lame. It's a little manual, but it's because this IntelliJ doesn't know, but the build is going to generate this class. Okay, so okay. switching back, let's try this again. Okay, so I kind of take it back to my comment of IntelliJ being that smart. <laughs> <laughs> it does its best, does its best. It's a, it's definitely a very helpful tool. Hey, look at that. Here we go, good success. Okay. So I'm just waiting for the pitch to, to get it, but anyway, the build is not working. This doesn't rhyme, but I, I have a saying, when the build succeeds, you must commit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we now have kind of our, our basic skeleton uh, app logic. So I'll just call it. Right, and we, and we want to commit that to make sure we have commit those changes. Cool. Yeah. OK, so going ahead and committing that. Um, mm -hmm. All right, uh, and then I'm just going to take a minute to, uh, uh, so one thing too, so I'm probably in the, for the sake of time in this particular live stream, I'm probably not going to do this. But uh, in the real world, uh, where I develop and program, the first thing I do after I implement this class is I create a test right, for this class. So 
Um, again, IntelliJ gives me some help here. I can create a unit test class, right? Um, so here's my tweet sentiment and my tweet sentiment class and then I can do some some test on it. I'm just going to send an empty list. I'm not really going to, this isn't a real test. I just want to show kind of how I would do this, right? Um, so. But, any, but either way, I just want to call out that when you use some in it, for instance, that I mentioned, if you're joining the session right now and you missed the, in, the, the initial discussion about some in it, SAM, the new CLI, they would, when you run SAM in it in whatever runtime, that gives you a full, fully bootstrapped Hello World application with additional libraries and unit testing done for you. So you can see what, how much of a difference that is to do unit testing all of these pieces in London, which is zero, by the way. But let's, let's carry on with that. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just removing the Hello World boilerplate that was put in for me. Um, so that, okay, now my, my repo is clean, um, this hello world stuff's gone, I have my, my basic layout for my app and uh, example unit test. Again, I'm not, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this particular one. I may pay for that later. Sometimes your unit tests save you from silly errors, but that's okay. Uh, okay. So, we have this sentiment handler. And so our next step is that we actually want to, um, we can package this and deploy it, for example. Uh, let me go ahead and, um, so another nicety that I get from Lombok is I can pull in S SLF for J and let me just print out the tweet, the list of tweets that I get from the app. Um, that way, or I'll log it. Okay, so I need some logger config here. Let me find. Um, let me create a resources directory here, and then I'm going to create a log for J two config and totally going to cheat and take this from my little practice I did of this. Yeah, that's fine. So just answering one question from the chat. So Scorpion, when, uh, we will publish the Git repository later, uh, but some of the apps that we're going to use here later to connect those, this other app for queuing the messaging and everything is already available on the service application repository. If you don't know what that means, is a service repository we announced last year that basically is a service, service application repository for service applications. So in, in the simple words, it's a catalog of applications that you can use on your account and deploy them and use them straight away. So James later on doing the same stream, we're gonna be using a app that's already available there to stream those tweets into a queue, put the messages into a queue and do something with them. So this and many others are already available for you. And because of that, later we will be, we will be publishing the Git repository. For yep. the other question about um, Tomcat and many other things, so because this is actually a serverless session and not a server full type of session, we're not be covering Tomcat or any other uh, middleware that you can think about it. Because that would actually slow us down and would actually be unnecessary for serverless. That creates a performance impact that doesn't have our cause in that scenario. If you are interested in learning more about serverless in particular, that go to awsamazoncom slash serverless. There's a bunch of documents in there explaining best practices and why using Tomcat or many other middlewares wouldn't necessarily help here. All right, James, so where are we? So okay, so I've just added sources. logging. I added a simple logging statement and logging configuration. So now we're going to um, actually, let's see. So um, the SAMP CLI has some interesting commands. Uh, let's do a, 
Let me see. So there's actually a SAM local command where you can run your function. Oh, you know what? First, um, I need to update my template. Let me actually do it right here. So if you recall, our template points at target slash hello world dot one dot zero dot jar. That's actually not what's being created by Maven because we remember we changed our name to this tweet sentiment. So it's now tweet sentiment one dot o dot o dot jar. So I need to change that. And then within it, your handler, you actually have to point to the full class. Um, so our our full class name is com dot amazon aws dot serverless dot uh, tweet sentiment dot you know Java. We like our long class names. <laughs> uh, Lambda dot tweet sentiment handler, and then this colon colon and the method that should be called, which is called handle request. Um, so just so you can see, I'm going to clear out some more of this stuff I don't actually need. Um, and then I need to have some kind of memory size. I'm just going to say, let's try 768. Uh, I already have a timeout. I, don't, I only have one function, so I don't really need globals. Um, I'm yeah, going to make this. Yeah, we, we, can, we can remove that. I'm going to make this function, we'll say 60 seconds. I mean, it should be pretty fast, but let's let's increase that. Um, yeah, so remove a little more of this boilerplate. OK, so now we have our basic Lambda function uh, with our Java runtime and memory size and our timeout. Uh, and let's, let's call this tweet sentiment. OK, we're just going to change its logical ID. Um, and let's say. Uh, so yeah, we'll have our tweet, tweet uh, sentiment, lambda function arn. So what um, what this does is it adds the arn as an output. So again, Sam uses confirmation under the covers, so it allows us to um, kind of output this or export it as a resource that can be queried and used. Uh, we're not going to really use that today. But just for completeness. OK, so cool. at this point, we, we built our, I'm just going to build again, just to make sure our jar is up to date with the latest code. So now we're, we've built our jar. So the next step is we need to actually, um, or oh, I wanted to show the invoke. So, um, so right now, it's just logging. It's expecting a array, a JSON array of strings. Um, those strings are supposed to be tweets, right? Like tweet JSON strings, but uh, but since we just log them and we're not actually trying to parse them or do anything with them yet, um, I did want to show that Sam Local can invoke. Uh, uh, you can use Sam Local, and Sam Local has this um, invoke command, and I think we called it tweet sentiment. Is that what we called it in our template just now? Yes, that's right. And then you can give this minus E option. And again, this, there's dash dash help, right? So you can see all this for yourself. Um, and then yeah. there's some file that you give. You give a local file that has JSON in it. So I'm going to just create something under my um, under my test resources. And let's just call it uh, tweets.json. So this is just a, let's just do an empty JSON array for now, just to sanity check, make sure this all works. So, sure. so we're going to use Sam local to invoke the tweet sentiment function. And again, that was defined in our Sam template, that tweet sentiment. Um, and we're going to pass it this event to process. And let's see what happens. Okay. In the meantime, we're doing this, James, I just got a bunch of questions here. One of the questions I got was, OK, that looks pretty cool. I could actually do this tweet processing. But how does it keep state that, that, that those tweets have been processed already? So in the meantime, you, you continue with that. I, I can answer that. So sure. basically, we're going we're gonna to be using a queue and also a database that we're going to be plugging in into our, our application. And then you'll be able to see how we can keep state all of those pieces. Lambda or servers on that compute environment for servers is actually very stateless, or in other words, completely stateless. 
it does keep that container or that execution context running for quite some time, well, a few minutes, but you should not rely on that. So essentially, because Lambda function is much more than just you know that particular line of code, all you have to do is actually to get that state and put somewhere else, something that's durable, if you actually care about that state. That could be a database like DynamoDB, a NoSQL database. That could be a SQS AQ, which is something we're going to be using today. So keep cool. that on there. Cool. All right. And uh, you know, in true live coding fashion, this failed. And Carol. I want to just make sure that my log4j2 config is in the jar, which it is. So maybe put it in the jar. And then it should be this config right here. And it was looking for this lambda appender. So I do want to make sure that I have the right. Um, I definitely want logging in my Lambda. So I do need to make sure I have the right pender in here. Sorry about the scrolling. No problem. OK, so I definitely have my log4j and I have my Lambda log4j here. And then, again, I'm going to cheat a little bit and just look at, because I did get this working before, <laughs> is log4j2 XML. And that is what I copied. OK. Cool. Yeah. So the same the same local command worked, but the but it had an issue finding the right logging. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'm gonna try so it one more time. But if yeah. that doesn't work, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to just deploying it. I may hit the exact yeah. same problem in uh, uh, it, when I run it against actual Lambda container. So right now yeah. this is the error that I'm running into. Yeah. Seems to be um, the same. It's it's not finding that lambda appender, so that's actually um, I can think of one thing that's different between these two apps. Uh, let me so so one thing that I do differently is cool. James. In the meantime, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna explain some a few things to. You. Uh, Scorpion, who has just actually just joined our chat and asking a bunch of questions in there. Yes, um, feel free to distract from my issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I mean, troubleshooting is also nice. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, we actually, I actually learn more when things fail and then try to resolve those pieces. But I just, just wanted to make sure that we clarify some of the basics and fundamentals of servers in Lambda. So, Scorpion, if you're listening to me right now, I know you, you, I've been seeing some of the questions you've posted on the chat. The way you can think about Lambda is it's a compute environment. But instead of actually launching those servers, SSH to it, or connect using RDP or whatever protocol you use to connect to that server, even VNC, VNC if you will, uh, servers actually, you define where your code is, you define an interface. And that interface or that method, you have to specify an event and a context. We will inject that event to that function, to that code, as soon as we execute them. How do we inject that event? You specify something called event source. So think about a API that will call your Lambda function, your code, as an, a, a user makes an API call that sends a post method, whatever that is sent. API, this API, or in this case, API Gateway will call this Lambda, this particular compute environment. We will spin up a execution context or a container, download your code, and call your function method, your interface, that you implemented that event and context. And then all you have to do in your code is actually to return a way that we can serialize back JSON or whatever the way you are actually working with. So essentially, you don't need any server right there. All you need to do is make sure that your code adheres to an interface that we ask you to do it, that you package your code in the way we ask you to do, to do it, in a zip file, for instance. And that's it. How are you going to invoke that function using AWS CLI, a SDK, or a public API, or from a queue? That's actually up to you. So hopefully that clarifies the fundamentals. But I'm going to send you some links on how to get started on those. But let's carry on that, James. How does that work? Ah, here we go. Some local works. I can see that. Yeah. 
Yep, so I just committed. Yeah, when it works, commit. <laughs> um, okay, so I had missed one of the shade plugin dependencies. And when I added that, then I'll show you the local invoke. So again, I'm using the SAM CLI to do a local invoke of this tweet sentiment. So that means it's not running in AWS Lambda right now. It's just running on my local machine. I'm passing it my tweets.json, which if you remember, it was just an empty array. And, uh, and what it's used, it's using Docker to simulate a Lambda-like environment. And you can see now my log message is showing up from my tweet sentiment class. So, uh, so yeah. Oh, yes, OK. And, Congratulations. Um, what's that? Congratulations, that's now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, next one. <laughs> Congratulations, I logged a message. Um, yeah, so uh, again, this is expecting a, a list of tweets. They're encoded as JSON. Um, I'm just going to show that right now, all it's doing is logging. It's not actually expecting them to be real JSON. So I'm just going to create some mock tweets and run this again, just so we can see it's running locally and the tweets it receives uh, are being logged. So there we go. So there's tweet one and tweet two. OK. Um, now we're going to, so now that we got it working locally, we want to take our, our app. This is a serverless application. And we want to, uh, me. OK, we want to take our serverless application. And then now we actually want to deploy it to our AWS account. So let me pull up. Um, actually, I need to do a little bit of cleanup. Because again, like I said, in full disclosure, I was totally testing this earlier to make sure it wouldn't. <laughs> That's fine. <tank. laughs> no problem. I learned from last time. <laughs> really wanted to make sure part two is is it. Um, so I'm just going to delete everything that I have here, and uh, I want to. So first, we're going to deploy this serverless app that we just wrote, this single function app that we just wrote. All right, I'm just cleaning up all my stacks here. Uh, that one will take a little bit to clean up. So um, the SAM CLI also, again, if we look at our help, it also provides a command called package and then a command mm -hmm. called deploy. And package will actually take your, member. we're referencing that local jar, so it'll upload it to S3 bucket that you specify. And then deploy will, actually deploy the SAM application to your AWS account. Um, mm -hmm. It's really just an alias for AWS CloudFormation package and deploy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do SAM package. Uh, mm -hmm. And if I look at the help documentation for this, it gives me the information. Now, I already know what it, uh, what it needs. So, or I think I do. Um, so, I'm going to use one of my AWS profiles that I set aside for Twitch. I'm going to do this in the US East 1 region. And then uh, I'm going to package, let's see what options it takes. Uh, actually, maybe I don't know my command. Let's see. Yeah, uh, so it, it, here. it takes a few. Yeah, so it takes this template file, and then it takes an S3 bucket, and then it outputs to a different file. So I kind of have my save command here. Um, okay. So you can see it's uploading to my S3 bucket now. And then it wrote a new version of the template because my template has this local reference. It wrote this new version of the template called packaged.yaml. And you can see the only difference here is that the code now points to an S3 location. And that's needed by a cloud formation. Okay. Um, so I'm actually probably going to have to do this a lot. So I'm going to uh, just put this into a little script. Sure. So in the meantime, so I'm just sending can... a few links to, to a few folks in there. Okay. And I'm also going so... to send a introduction workshop that you can use as well uh, to get started. So Scorpion. I sent you another link, and also for everybody else, which if you are beginning with serverless in the very at first stages, the link that I sent you, Chris Munz and a bunch of other amazing folks uh, who are also here on the stream, on the chat, they actually walk you through an introduction to serverless using 
uh, Node.js and also using the tools we have available. It's actually only okay. 30 minutes, very quick, straight to the point. Great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, now that I've packaged that template, I'm going to deploy it. So this is actually going to deploy it to my AWS account. Um, this, so we can do that via the SAM deploy command. And then, oh, forgot my profile. Okay. <laughs> I was about, I was wondering about exactly that. So profile and region. There are environment variables you can set to kind of default these, but I just like doing the full command to hopefully it's less magical that way. Um, I just got an error. So CloudFormation requires you to set certain capabilities. Um, so when you create a Lambda function, it's actually creating an IAM role. So you have to give CloudFormation explicit permissions for that. Let's see if this works. OK, waiting for change set to be created. So now if we go back to CloudFormation, we can see that our tweet sentiment stack is now being created. Um, so that's sure. exciting. Let me, sure. and I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, let's see if this succeeds first off. Yeah, sure. So in the meantime, that's being created. For those of you who are new to SAM or server's application model, that essentially allows you to model your service application in a way that's very similar to infrastructure as code, actually is infrastructure as code. So whatever James is actually doing, if we destroy that now, we should be able to recreate exactly as it was before. Okay, so now I've, uh, so that succeeded. So the stacks uh, was created successfully. So what I did was, again, I'm probably going to have to do this a lot. So I just created a little script for myself in bin called deploy. And I just cool. pasted that command into it. Because that way I can iterate on this and do that. Awesome. Um, what you can see is that this stack was created successfully. Um, Yay. And we had resources created. There were two. There was a role, an IAM role. And, uh, and then the Lambda function itself. And this kind of showcases the power of SAM. You didn't really see this role in the template. And that's because SAM actually um, takes care of a, lot of, of a lot of those details for you under the covers and really makes serverless more, uh, a serverless application specifically, very easy to specify in your template. So yeah. we have this Lambda function. Um, we can go to the Lambda console really quickly and check out, check out this function and it gives you a little bit of a view of this is the function it has these triggers and ours has none and then it has access to these things so it can write out to amazon cloudwatch logs okay cool. uh, which is good because that's what we want um, there's also this really nice monitoring tab that we'll use in a in a minute to see history of invocations of the app how yeah. long they took um, and then errors and throttles that kind of stuff um, so at this point, we can actually test our, uh, and then the console also allows you to configure test events. So if you remember, we kind of had that sample JSON, and um, so we can create an array, and I'm going to just name this something different, AWS tweet one and AWS tweet two. Um, and here's my tweet test. So I can create that event, and then I can actually invoke my Lambda straight from the console to test this and see if it works. Now, yeah. when you look at this. Just adding that for emphasis that the test you're doing is you're testing the function that just got deployed, which goes yes. back to Scorpion's questions about how do I invoke this? How do I invoke my code? So that's exactly what we're just doing without having an API on top. And what James did previously was testing the same thing using SAM, which basically is a CLI that does that locally for you. Yep, so SAM local, the local command allows you to test it locally on your machine in a Lambda-like environment uh, via do a Docker container. And then um, this is, I actually deployed the Lambda function to AWS Lambda and I'm testing it live in the console. So the Lambda itself returned nothing because remember, we don't return anything from this Lambda. However, we do log this message. And so we can see that this is all working. Um, Perfect. Okay, great. James, I'm just conscious about the time. So what will be next for us? Will be to do some of the coding in there or should we get the, the, an application for the service app repo. 
Yeah, so so that's that's the question, right? So I wanted to answer that question of, um, okay, we, so, sorry, got to commit. When it works, I have to commit. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, almost, it almost feels like a ritual or something, but it's just a habit, so. That's it is, it's exactly. a good habit to have. So Sam Deploy works now, yay. All right, <laughs> so I just wanted to checkpoint. Um, okay, so the next step with this is where are the tweets going to come from, right? So yeah, I can I can test this all I want, but uh, I think the question we had from from the Twitch audience, I don't remember uh, who it was, but where are the tweets going to come from? So this is where the serverless application repository can help us. Um, in the Lambda console, when you go to create a function, you have several options. You can author it from scratch, which is sort of what we're doing with the assistance of SAM CLI. Um, you can use these blueprints, which are kind of like these templates to get started. And then there's the serverless application repository. These are ready to deploy apps um, right. that, that provide certain functions. So we can look at, if I search for Twitter, there's an app that's called AWS Serverless Twitter Event Source. And what it does, it says this serverless app turns a Twitter search query into an AWS Lambda event source by invoking a given Lambda function to process tweets found by search. So it doesn't define the Lambda function. You give it a Lambda function, and it'll just start sending you tweets to process. So if I click on this, I can actually, so the serverless application repository allows you to just deploy these apps um, into your account. So it gives me information about what permissions the app is requesting, uh, the template, it, it actually shows me, so this is a serverless application, so it has its own SAM template that I can look at and see what the app is consists of and what it does. Um, it also has a license, and then it has a readme, and this particular readme actually shows the, the app. Um, so this uses a CloudWatch schedule, uh, CloudWatch right. events rule to right. trigger uh, a search polar lambda function. So again, this is the boundary of the application. So this application provides this lambda function. That lambda function searches for tweets using your configured search, and then it async invokes um, whatever tweet processor lambda you give it, right? Um, it also, there was a question about how do you know which tweets you already processed. The app actually has a mode called streaming mode where it uses DynamoDB as a way to store state. And, and so you can use this app in two modes. You can use it in stream mode, which means that uh, it'll only send you new tweets and it'll remember kind of the last time of tweets that it processed and, it, and not resend them. And then, right. you, or you can use it in a stateless mode where it just always runs the search and always sends you all the tweets. So Amazing. the serverless application repository allows you to create a stack. So I'm going to call this, uh, so sentiment tweet event source. So that's my stack. You can set, it has a, lot, a number of parameters you can give the app. So polling frequency right. in minutes. So I'll just say, pull it every one minute then this is the critical piece, your tweet processor function name. So uh, this, we're going to find our function. So this tweet sentiment function was created by uh, when we did our SAM deploy. This is the name of that function. So we can actually take that name and we can put it in for this tweet processor function name. And now this tells the app that when it gets new tweets, that's the function that's going to be invoked with those new tweets. That's then pretty you, clever. Yeah, you can set the batch size and then, oh, oops, <laughs> maybe not the negative one. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, because it's interacting with the Twitter API, it does need, the Twitter API requires a number of things. It requires an access token, access token secret, all these all these values which the app takes as encrypted values. And the readme walks you through the entire thing. It has the installation steps and creating a Twitter API key. Um, now I just have these values. Again, these are encrypted, so not worried about showing them on the screen, but. Yeah, that's fine. 
By the, um, by the way, Diego just sent the link to everyone on the chat directly to the application that James is just deploying. So you can also deploy that on your account and you can actually do that later at your own convenience. Yeah, you can use this to create Twitter bots. You can use it for, I actually used it to create a retweet leaderboard game. And I've played that with audiences at uh, on Twitch and I've played it with audiences in uh, SF Summit, San Francisco Summit. Yeah. Um, it's very fun. And then here's the other critical piece, your search text. So what are you going to search Twitter for? And on Twitter, there's, if you go to twitter.com slash search, you can test out different searches. I'm going to search for AWS Lambda. Um, and it's, oh, sorry, this is very small. Um, so this search box, you can test your searches right here in Twitter, and the same strings are valid. Um, there's there's also some magic uh, Twitter additional filter filters ah, that you can add. Good. You can Google these things and find there's you can remove anything that's just a native retweet. So in Twitter's yeah. data model, every time you click retweet, um, that actually is considered its own tweet by itself. And so this filter will take away those. Um, because we just we don't want to double count for all of those. Yeah. So Absolutely. I'm going to use uh, again. I'm going to use this value in my app. So my search text is AWS Lambda, and I'm using this little magic to filter native retweets out. Um, and then stream mode by default it's disabled. I'm going to leave it disabled because I kind of want to keep receiving the tweets since we're in a testing mode right now. Uh, right. But you could absolutely send, set it to true, and then all of a sudden your app is stateful, right? So at this point, I can click, I've filled in my parameters, I'm going to click deploy, and what this will do is it will deploy this serverless application right into my account. Perfect. And so by the way, to, just to make sure, it, what you just created actually uses SAM as a template, right? Yep, it does. But the cool thing about this is the publisher of this application, the the other person who published this app, um, they they did their SAM package, they did their, and then they published it to the serverless application repository. So now when I'm deploying this, I don't have to worry about where the SAM template is, where the code for the Lambda functions are, all that's taken care of by the repository. I just click deploy and boom, it's in my AWS account. Um, it's yeah, deployed as a CloudFormation stack. We can see, um, if I go back to CloudFormation, we can see that this stack is creating right now, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully successfully. Um, and I, yeah, and if you remember, I linked it to my app by providing that the, the uh, Lambda function name as a parameter to this Twitter event source app. And by the way, you, you pass the name, not the arm, right? Not the full, the identification of the Lambda function. Correct. Yeah, I passed the name, and that was uh, that's just required by the app. So the app description, I think, says it's Lambda function name, not arm. Yeah, and that's app specific. Sure. So uh, this app creates a, a few resources, so you can see that it's just still creating. Um, but what we'll have at the end. So I, I really wanted to show this. We didn't get to show this last time, but this is the power of the serverless application repository. I don't have to, because of the work that this publisher did, I don't have to know how to interact with the Twitter API. I don't have to, uh, honestly, I don't even have to care. I can just put in a Twitter search string and write the Lambda function that processes those tweets. And then all of a sudden, I have this event source of tweets coming in, and I can just process it. Um, so the application serverless application repository, oh, uh, another thing too, this is a publicly available app, and all public apps in the serverless application repository are open source. Um, the, their link to their open source repository website is in the app. You can find the source code, browse it, um, you know, so all open source and really saves a lot of time. And yay, it just deployed successfully. Awesome. Really cool. So so if you remember how the app worked, it uses a CloudWatch events rule, and it's mm -hmm. right here. So I'm going to open that up because I want to take Wait. a look. 
Yeah. I want to take a look so at this case. rule. Oh, yeah, sorry, so this is actually the Lambda function. Yeah, so basically, you're calling that function to look up for tweets every one minute. Is that right? Yes, but depending on the number of tweets that are found, it'll actually break it up. If you remember the batch size of 15, it actually breaks up the batch of the tweet into batches of 15, and then async invokes your Lambda function. So your Lambda function can actually get invoked many, many times. So if That's I look awesome. in my CloudWatch events rules, I can see this rule was created. It's enabled. Um, if I look at it, you can see it's every one minute. It's invoking this. Uh, it's Oh, sorry, that's the ARN. It's invoking this Lambda function. You can also, it says show metrics for the rule. So that takes you to CloudWatch metrics. I can see if this rule has been invoked. I can see the rule has been invoked one time so far. Um, Already? Yeah. Now, the AWS Lambda hashtag search actually returns a lot of results. So I'm temporarily going to disable this just for our testing purposes. So again, I can disable this rule. And now it's no longer going to um, invoke our Lambda every one minute. But it did invoke right. it once. So let's, hopefully successfully, let's take a look. So here's our tweet sentiment Lambda function. If I look under the monitoring tab, I can see a number of invocations to this Lambda now. Right? And so when I manually invoked it, I just did that once. So you can see here that we've invoked it a number of times. All right. Cool. That's pretty cool. So, so and, 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 and by the way, in the, in the meantime, we get back to Cody and some other pieces. I'm also conscious of all the time. I think that yes, the key yes. takeaway from this is all of this was already done, which means it was an application already done that you simply connected as if it, it had simply a serverless component that you got from this catalog of applications, service application reboot. And essentially, you are getting these building blocks already done and adding value to your application. And all we are coding, actually, is going to be a tiny bit now. Exactly, exactly. And that's, for me, that's, and you know, full disclosure, I am the tech lead of the AWS serverless application repository, so I'm very excited about it. But even objectively, I was developing serverless applications before I, I moved to that team uh, within Amazon. And I, I'm so excited about the potential of of how much faster we're going to be able to develop applications as more and more apps get into this repository. We'll be able to right. develop them, and because they're serverless, that you get all the benefits of serverless on top of that, meaning that not only are you faster, but your your application that you end up creating will scale incredible to a very high degree. Um, so what I want to show here is now in CloudWatch logs, we can see that we're receiving real tweets from the app. So we received this array of tweets, and this is what the tweet data looks like it, from the Twitter uh, from the Twitter event source. And this is the same right. format that's returned by the Twitter API. And you can see that. So what we're going to do, there's a field called text. And this is the text from the tweet. So what I want to do is I want to extract that text and then I want to send it to Amazon Comprehend so that it can, and Amazon Comprehend is this really neat service. Actually, I will go ahead and just do this right now. So just to showcase what Comprehend does, mm -hmm. so I'm going to the Comprehend console, and you can actually just try out this. You can put whatever text you want. So this is, this is my text. And then it can perform sentiment analysis. So it, it actually does a number of different things for analysis. Um, it looks for entities in it, so organizations, people, locations. It can extract key phrases from any text you give it. It can do language auto recognition, or you can specify a language code. Uh, we're going to remember this for later. The language code for English is EN. Uh, just to simplify yeah. this app, I'm just going to assume English. Cool. Uh, and and definitely no offense. It's really just a simplifier. <laughs> That's fine. I'm actually Brazilian, and I can say I'm not offended because I'm, um, you know. That's yeah. Fine. <laughs> okay. Um, but this is the actual function we're going to use. It's called sentiment. It's the sentiment score. Um, and it does scores for different. Uh, it has different confidence levels between zero and one. 
for whether it's positive, neutral, mixed, or negative. Now this one, it says, working with services more and more these days, saves clients money, scales nearly infinitely, and saves me time, and it continues, and there's another link. Which is, we can definitely say it's pretty positive, which is actually gives me confidence. Yeah, that it sounds pretty good. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds very positive, and you can see the positive score is at 0.72, or you can think of that as 72%. Um, po yeah. confidence that this is positive, and then 27% that it's neutral. Um, so this is a really cool service because I didn't have to write sentiment analysis, right? So yeah. we're going to delegate to this service to give us our sentiment scores, and then we're going to publish them to CloudWatch Metrics and hopefully get some graphs of, of sentiment scores. Amazing. Looking right. forward. Let's do so it. So let's, let's, get, let's get on to the dirty pieces now. Let's get down to codes. Yep. All right, so remember all my business logic is just in this sentiment app. So what do we need? We need two things. We need Amazon Comprehend. And we need Amazon CloudWatch. Right. I'm gonna use Lombok for some magic checking so it ensures these aren't null. These are final instance variables, meaning you have to have a constructor that initializes them. That's just boilerplate. So guess what? Lombok makes this much faster for us. It auto-generates that. I'm almost almost falling in love with this Lombok, except that I love Python, so I yeah, will yeah. keep that going. <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah, if you're a Java developer, I definitely um, uh, I like Lombok a lot. Uh, there are alternative solutions as well. Your IDE can generate a lot of this code, and then it's less magical to you. So, I mean, I'm not uh, trying to say you have to do it one way or another. Um, okay, yeah. but what we actually want to do now is we want to process these tweets. So, uh, so what do we want to do? We want to process the tweets and then send them to uh, and send them to CloudWatch metrics. Okay. So our first step is to send them to Comprehend. So we want to change, um, and if we look at Comprehend, let me see. Uh, so actually, the first thing I want to do is this. This is a list of strings. So I would like to actually create a class that that makes them look more like tweets to me, uh, or that kind of encapsulates the details of this string parsing for me. So I'm going to create a class called Tweet. Um, Okay, so I'm going to encapsulate parsing of a tweet. I'm going to parse this object as a JSON object. Um, so I'm going to have this take in a string, which is your tweet JSON string. And then it'll set this to oops, a new JSON object. And then I'm just going to provide this simple get text method and it returns this um, it's just going to extract whatever's in the key called text if you remember our json uh, our tweet json has this key called text that's where the string is that we want to send to comprehend so i'm just creating a little object object to encapsulate this so that i don't have to do a bunch of parsing in here um, so i have my comprehend client and I have my cloudwatch client so what i this, what I essentially want to do is I want to change, um, let's see. So uh, a little bit of background here. So let's just ch take a look at what we have from Comprehend first. So Comprehend has uh, this. It, it, yeah, if, if you don't mind, James, I would say let's get Comprehend to work. Yep. And then, then we actually follow through for CloudWatch afterwards. Uh, you're, I'm too ambitious for you. Is that, <laughs> is that what's going on? <laughs> now, I'm actually conscious about the time, so I just want to make sure that we yep. we can get the comprehend thing done, and then Absolutely. we explain that a little bit, and then CloudWatch will just follow through. Yep. So let's just run comprehend with some string. So right. So we'll have a batch detect sentiment request, and um, so with language code. So again, we're just going to assume it's English for the sake of time um, right. with a text list. And let's just take this string. Right. And then we, then we can pass that, the, the array of list. I'll tweet it later. Cool. Yep. 
Okay, so let me see if there's anything else I need from here. Nope, that looks about right. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to not worry so much about that. And here's comprehend. So I'm making this call with this local string. Okay. I'm just going to call it results. Um, so now we can do batch detect sentiment results, and we'll get this result out. Um, and it'll have a result list in it. We'll hopefully just have one thing in that list. And that's our sentiment score. Um, yeah, what I'll do is I'll just say info log. Um, and just, yeah, I'll just log my result. Right. OK, so let's try that. I, I think that's totally fair. Um, so I did add these. So that means in my dagger, I do need to provide them to this. So we have this Amazon Comprehend. Um, so AWS Java SDK provides this client builder. I was so now we have our, exactly this. I was, I was wondering, where is the client builder? I cannot see that. Cool. Yeah. Exactly. So. Standard dummy build with the default settings, and let's see what happens. Yep, just default settings, default everything. Um, great. So let's. Now we package that up with Maven, and then we deploy it again. Right, James? Exactly. Cool. So for those of you who are watching that now, uh, we essentially just made some changes in the code, now actually using the API of Comprehend. And then we just got an issue. Yeah, so but for we, our test. Exactly. Wait, wait. So we yes. hadn't updated our test here. Um, now, for the sake of time, again, like I said, in regular development, I'm, I'm a stickler for unit tests. But for now, I'm yeah. just going to go ahead and comment that out yeah. so that we can make progress here. Yeah, we, we only have 40 minutes, so I wouldn't expect any sure. or anyone, any human being, actually, to code everything and to work on the test. Yep. Fine. OK. okay. So, so just to recap that quickly, we are creating the, we, we are basically need to do the git commit. Yes, James, I know you were very <laughs> anxious about that git commit. <laughs> uh, so we just made those changes. We now initialize the Comprehend API or the, the client SDK. And we also just uh, initialize the CloudWatch, so we can use that later uh, for creating a metric. And also, more importantly, we are just creating a new jar through Maven, package that up, and now we are deploying like we did before. Yep. So it should be up in a few seconds. Yep. So I'm just deploying uh, the updated Lambda function. And there it is. I'm going to go no. back to my Lambda console. This is my, again, my tweet sentiment processor. I'm going to just kick off my test tweet because remember we hard coded, we just hard coded uh, that we're going to test sentiment analysis. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, this is not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is because I didn't add permission for my Lambda function to actually call comprehend. Oh, um, that's true. I knew that would be the yeah. case. So, but I just want to showcase this. So, one interesting thing about serverless is, by default, your Lambda function doesn't have permission to do anything, and that's good, right? Serverless is actually very strong in terms of security. You have to specify exactly what your Lambda function can and can't do. Um, so, we can see the error here is that it's not authorized to perform batch detect sentiment. Uh, so I want to show that in the serverless application repository, or sorry, the uh, serverless application model, and this is probably small. Let me get to the page first. So under docs, there's this really cool thing that's SAM specific. It's called policy templates. So one thing you could use is you could use AWS managed policies. Now those. Um, they use resource star, which which uh, can give you more, give the Lambda access to more than you necessarily want. Um, so policy templates were uh, invention in SAM to actually be able to scope down permissions. 
So if we look, there's actually, um, so I'm going to show, uh, we need comprehend. So there's a comprehend basic access policy. And then that batch detect sentiment should be in here. There it is. Yeah. Okay. The and then yeah. while we're here, we know we need to put metric data to CloudWatch. So there's also this CloudWatch put metric policy. So we're going to add these to our Lambda or uh, SAM template. And so essentially, in the meantime, James is doing this. So this policy template is a property that you add in your SAM template that essentially simplifies the, the action of adding permissions to your functions as you normally would using IEM as a service with a difference that it simplifies exactly what you normally would in a service application. Think about accessing a database, or in this case, giving access to do a CloudWatch metric. Sometimes you don't remember exactly what is the API call, what is the API name of that service. So that kind of a simplifies experience. Okay, so what I've done here is I've added these. So again, SAM simplifies serverless. I don't have to mess around with IAM roles and that kind of thing. I just have this policies property and I can add these policy templates. Um, the reason there's this empty object here is because policy templates are parameterized. So you need to provide parameter values. These two policy right. templates happen to not have any parameters required. Okay, so we just updated. And let's see awesome. if this addressed our issue. Let's give that a try. Okay, so, hey, it worked. Yay! Okay, and I'm we- so, I'm, 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 I am really so happy to see this. You have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so our sentiment result that we logged shows that there was, we got that same result. Our positive sentiment was about 72%. Our negative uh, actually, oh, our neutral was about 27%, right? So it gives us scores, same scores that we right. saw on the console. So great. So we have some confidence here that, that we know what we're doing, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> well, we, okay. actually got, we actually got this. So I just yeah. got a joke. I am, I am so happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think I've seen that only once do. anyway. Let's, let's, let's carry on on this one. So I need to log these as metrics to CloudWatch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these. Um, so, so I'm going to take these tweets and I'm going to have some method that converts them to metric data. This to do. Sorry, I'll scroll a little bit. There you go. Um, okay, so this will convert those tweet strings into a list of metrics that we need to send to CloudWatch. And then I will use uh, Guava has a pretty nice tool. So the thing with put metric data is that um, you can only supply 20 metrics at a time. So I'm going to take our metrics and partition them into batches of 20. Uh, and I will end up with, and we'll just, we'll come back to that. So I really want to get down to taking these metrics and turning them into, uh, or taking these tweets and turning them into metrics. So the first thing I need to do is I need to convert them to um, the tweet text, right? So I can take my tweet strings, uh, this is Java 8, so I have streams. So I can map these to, remember I have my tweet class, my helper class. So it takes in, it converts it to a tweet, and then I can extract the um, text out of the tweet. Right. And, and change that to a list. So now I've converted my list of tweet strings into tweet objects, and then extracted just the text out of them and put that into a new list. So here's my tweet text, all right? And the reason why I'm, uh, putting it into a full list is because, like you like you saw, this is actually called batch detect sentiment. So uh, it takes all of them. So now I'm going to call comprehend. Let's just pull this code. But instead of instead of we with text over. list hard coded text, now I can just put the tweet text in there. And again, it's a batch, so I'm going to get a number of results out. Um, 
Okay, but the, we're supposed to return metrics out of this, right? So I want to actually convert these to metrics. So I'm going to say um, return, I'm going to take my result list. Sorry, can you see it at the bottom of the screen like that? I'm having to. Let me so just it's, actually still, it's actually still catching up, so you should be able to, because I can still see your return no, um, so you should be fine. Okay. So, um, so I get a result list of, uh, let's see, I get a result list back from, of these sentiment metrics. Let's take a look at what one of these looks like, just so we can see the structure. So you can see there's sentiment and there's a string and then there's sentiment score and the scores are what we're more interested in. So the sentiment score, you have these, you can get, get mixed, get negative, get neutral and get positive and those are floats. So those are those numbers that we saw that it's, it kind of gauges them on four different axes of how confident is it that it's mixed, negative, neutral or positive. So we wanna just log metrics for all of those things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this result list, I'm going to convert each of those metrics into, uh, into a list of metric data. Okay, so I have my streams. So out of this, for all the different sentiment results for all the different tweet texts that I sent, I'm going to map them and I'm going to use a function uh, that says two sentiment metrics. Um, so what this method will do is it takes in a, a single item result from the sentiment metrics and then it returns a list of metric datum objects. And I'll get to this. So now I've converted my list of results into a list of metric data, but it's, remember for each result, it's going to return a list of four metrics, right? One of them is the mixed, one of them's the neutral, one of them's positive, one of them's negative. So I actually, so I'll get a list of lists. So I actually want to flatten that into just a single list of all the metrics so I can log it. Um, and Java Streams has this thing called flat map which you can use the list list dot stream and then now that converts it to just this single list okay um, yeah if you're not as familiar with java streams you can just think of it as it's kind of more like functional programming you're just doing conversions on lists and then flattening them out um, but this will convert my tweet strings into these metric datum objects which i can then log to cloudwatch metrics so I'm going to go ahead and um, do this. OK, so now I need to actually convert the sentiment item results to metrics. Um, to do that, I basically want to have something like, I need my list of metrics. Um, I'm going to return this list at the end. And then I'm going to populate it. Uh, to do this, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to add. Um, so James, in the meantime, you're doing this. I'm just getting a few comments where it says, uh, I think it's column, column VG. That, isn't that going to fail because you're trying to send about 80 metrics, but the API call only supports 20? So yeah, that's you want to partition that to 5 to 20. Yeah, that's an excellent question, and I kind of have that as a to-do up here, if you saw, that I am going to partition this list into the list of metrics into uh, batches of 20. This is from Google Guava, um, and so I, I will do that. Uh, that's coming up shortly. Great call out. So, all right. All right. So I'm going to add in my sentiment score. Um, I'm actually going to log these as different dimensions because remember there's this get mixed, get uh, all these different things. So I'm going to um, I'm going to create a a method that'll help me do this. Um, so. 
So this will be sentiment type, and this will be value. And let's, I think the API takes a double. So, so what we're going to do yeah, is we're going to use, so metrics require a name. So I'll just call it sentiment score. They require a name, uh, let's see, they require a, um, I'm going to use dimensions to separate out the mix, negative, neutral, all that stuff. So um, the, sorry, it's kind of covering this. Um, so for a dimension, it takes a new dimension and you have to name the dimension. So I'm going to call it sentiment type. And then um, the value is going to be whatever type is passed into this method. Um, and then most importantly, we need the actual value. Uh, and that's going to be the value that's passed in. So this is going to convert. Uh, Quick question, don't you need a namespace or does he automatically get the namespace on the matrix, metric data? Yeah, good question. So the put metric data API requires one namespace for all of the metric datum objects that are sent. So the namespace is not encoded in the metric datum object. It's encoded in the top level request and you'll see that later. Cool. Okay, so this is mixed. Uh, I have an error on this get mixed because it's a float. So I can just do double value and convert it. So so now I'm gonna do the same thing for my other, so I had mixed, here's negative. Here's neutral. <laughs> it's hard to spell neutral. <laughs> the, funny, the, the, the funny part, I, I keep getting private messages on, on, on Twitter saying, Python is better than Java, so I'm kind of quite happy, but at the same time, let's keep this respectful for Java. For, for Java which is <laughs> hey, you are welcome to, you know, I've, I've written serverless apps in Python, I've written serverless apps in uh, JavaScript in, and in Java. Um, the beauty of Lambda is that it is a polyglot platform. And so, yeah, have those strong opinions about your language, your favorite language, write serverless apps in your favorite language, and yeah. do it. Yeah, it's great. Absolutely, it's yeah. great. I, I definitely. In the, in the mean, yeah, I, in the meantime, you, you keep it up. I'm also conscious we have 30 minutes left. Okay. Is, yeah, I'm not, not putting any pressure, by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not feeling any I'll pressure. Also, <laughs> I'll set you echo this out there. I, I see a lot of customers on a weekly, on a weekly basis, sometimes even on a daily basis on my trips in Europe and everything. And the great part that I see is no matter what country, you see customers using all sorts of languages. And sometimes you get your customers where they're using multiple languages in there. Python for some scientific pieces, Java for some enterprise pieces. As, as long as you can run that in Lambda because it supports the runtime, I don't see a problem actually doing this. In fact, if you want to see a fun fact, as Americans call it, uh, there's a project on GitHub that someone made it to work with COBOL for Lambda. If you nice. don't believe me, I'll get you a link in a minute. Nice, okay, so what I've done now, um, what I've done now is, uh, is we had our method that converts our tweet strings, it calls comprehend, it gets sentiment scores back, it flattens them out into a bunch of different metric datum, a uh, list of metric datum, objects that we want to send to CloudWatch metrics. And then uh, as, as you called out, as the audience called out, we do need to partition it because we can only do 20 metrics per call. So Guava provides a really nice function for that. So I'm saying partition it into chunks of 20 and for each one of those then put the metric data, which is just a method that's right here that calls CloudWatch. This is where I fill in the namespace um, in this request. So I'm just calling uh, it tweet sentiments. Sense. And then I pass those 20 metrics or less, um, those metrics to CloudWatch. So this should, fingers crossed, be all I need. Um, let's try it. So I'm just gonna do uh, 
all of it in one command. Let's see what happens. Yeah. So essentially, that there will be a namespace of actually Twitter, Twitter sentiment, and sentiment score. And based on this, you'll be able to see positive, neutral, negative, and mixed. Did I get this right? Or yeah, that that should be the case. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the, the, the theory is actually important. So. OK, let's package this up, and let's actually do this deploy. Yeah, we're doing it. So the build succeeded. It packaged it, and it's now deploying the updated Lambda function and just finished. All right. Get ready for And exploding. by the way, you, you, you actually, did you enable the CloudWatch rule? Or maybe I missed that. Oh, sorry, the CloudWatch. The oh, CloudWatch um, events rule? No, it's still disabled right now, which is so I'm going to enable, enable that, right? Yeah, I'm going to enable it right now. Um, so, folks who are on the screen, if you can do me a favor, we need tweets with the hashtag AWS Lambda. If you want to yes. put a tweet or whatever you want to do in there, including sending thanks or any kind messages, please, to us, uh, that would be very nice. So, we appreciate yeah, that. It is in the meantime, we generate some analysis. traffic and get some metrics. It is doing sentiment analysis, so this should be fun. <laughs> so, I'm looking for my CloudWatch events rule to be invoked um, or to be triggered. Yeah, so that so that might, might, let me actually do a Twitter. Let me actually contribute that. I'm just asking for people to tweet. I'm not setting out any example. So, yeah, where's your tweets? <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'm just waiting for that rule to trigger. Um, it is enabled currently. The reason I'm waiting for that rule is because I didn't want to try to fabricate my own tweet. <laughs> I, I could do that. If we do run into issues with this, then I can create my own uh, test tweet message just to make sure. OK, so we got an invocation. Uh, okay. And hopefully, I'm going to disable the rule because, again, it can just, uh, you can end up with quite a few tweets. So I'm going to disable uh -huh. this rule. And then I'm going to go back to my Lambda function. And I should hopefully be able to see logs. So I sent, I sent a bunch of tweets. Let's see. Hopefully, I can get a feature. OK, I'm just checking the logs very quickly um, to see if I can see some of the latest. OK, uh, <laughs> maybe it would have been a good idea for me to log some success messages. But you can see that it, it did, the request did happen. Um, oh, oh, got an error. I see you got one actually error. one out of multiple executions. So oh, that's... you know what? That error was from my last test where I didn't have access. So that's what that is. Yeah. So that means our new requests actually have success. Um, uh -huh. Let's check out our metrics then and see. Yeah, what do we, like. let's see if we can get a new metric around there. Ah, so. so I see a namespace of tweet sentiment. Oh, you have four metrics already. So that, yeah. And okay, so the type seems to work. So sentiment type, you can see there's mixed, negative, neutral, and positive. Um, right. I can look at, so I'll add them oh, to my graph. That's super nice. Look at that. And, I'll, and I will put. Averages. So uh, since this works, I'm going to go ahead and re-enable my CloudWatch events rule just so that we get more data. That's awesome. Congratulations. We, we, we actually made it work this time, Woo which is super <laughs> awesome to see. <laughs> okay, By the way, did you, me, did you get uh, commit? Oh, yeah. Did I commit? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. I can't believe you've done this. Oh, my, all my oh. hard work could be gone. <laughs> Well, at least um, now you can say successful code, it works. Yeah, the app works. No better method than that. Yeah. Amazing. Um, OK, let me, let's see. We'll kind of check in on this. Um, I'm going to set it to refresh every minute, because I think I set these, did I set these to one minute metrics? Yeah. Give me just so please, folks, send some tweets. We need more data in there. Yeah. So, so Diego, I know, I know you're on the chat, mate. Send some tweets there. Some yeah, nice, so course. it's just looking for AWS Lambda. Um, so, sorry, this is super small. Okay. 
There we go. So there's my example tweets. Okay, uh, clearly mine are quite positive. <laughs> um, so I'm just uh, saying one more. I, I don't think I can type that fast. Maybe I can just create a, a Python script that would just create a for loop, let's say. Okay, so what we're seeing is that our neutral, so, so sentiment analysis on most of the tweets that it's finding looks like the majority or it's detecting is neutral, pretty neutral, and then there's positive is next, and then negative. Um, again, I'm looking at averages. I can look at the most confidence that it has. So I can see that it's finding some, uh, it has 100% confidence and neutrality, and then there's some extremely positive tweets, and then the negative tweets that it's finding. Oh, we got some uh, uptick in negative tweets. I'm sure that's people testing out the app. Um, and then uh, mix is pretty low percentage. So. Um, and then let's see, I, I can look at percentiles if I want to. Um, so yeah, That's you can cool. see that. And, and, and actually, by the way, we can even change that graph and make it more, we can change in the graph options. I think we can have a different different visualization, right, style. Now, yeah, I think we, have, um, we can have bars and everything else. Stack area, here it is. Nice, go. yep, yep. And even the numbers, right. if we want, this is pretty cool. All right, we definitely we definitely have an increase in in negative. So let's let's see if we can get some more positive or. You know. <laughs> so that's I, that's essentially that's essentially how you call live Stack Overflow and live yeah. feedback. So essentially, getting <laughs> reactions. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and it, it is the internet, so I don't expect much neutrality. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> is it neutral? <laughs> I actually, the actually wonder, like, sarcasm, sarcasm getting there. I think yeah. for, for because I live in the UK now, I think we should have a metric for sarcasm in there. Uh, yeah. Let's see, maybe it's a feature request for. I know. Program. I wonder about that, right? With sentiment analysis and sarcasm, that's that has to be a very fascinating problem for the Comprehend folks to solve. <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. So yeah, this is our app. Uh, I kind of want to publish this as an app to the serverless repo. You want to try it? Yeah, let's do it. We have three minutes left, so at least we can show even we complete the whole cycle. Yeah, so if I want to contribute this app so that other people can use it, then I can contribute it to the serverless application repository. So let's, um, so again, the so serverless repo, um, let's go to the main AWS page. Um, I think if you click in home, you should be able to, to click in publish. But yeah, anyway. Yep. So here's the serverless repo, and then there's uh, publishing applications, and we can publish publish an application. This is exciting. Okay, yeah, so we've absolutely. tested our app. We feel good about I, it. By the way, I can even see the retweet leaderboard, which is another episode that you also did it. I'm just gonna dig in and see that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I'll just put in, uh, this doesn't really have a home page right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have it on a GitHub, but uh, I'll work on getting it on a GitHub. Um, yeah, it's fine. It, it, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I'll just pretend. Uh, this doesn't actually By the way, everyone on the stream, we will be, we will be open sourcing this. So even if you yes. don't have the repo right now, we'll be able to follow this through afterwards. So follow us on Twitter, or actually the next time we have the build on service, which is in two weeks, June 26, uh, I'll be able to call out this repo as well. So don't worry. Or better than better yet, right, James? Keep an eye on service application repository. There's yes, absolutely. Because remember, this, this app, the reason we were able to finish it so quickly in this short amount of time for this live coding session is because all of the work for interacting with the Twitter API and handling that, handling all that complexity was taken away from us by, it, it, was, it was handled for us by this app that's in the serverless application repository. So, uh, so yeah, it analyzes tweets returned, um, analyzes sentiment of tweets returned from the Twitter event source serverless uh, application um, and uh, publishes them as metrics to CloudWatch metrics. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, so sentiment analysis, uh, Twitter, tweets, I don't know, whatever labels we want to put you can on say, You can say Java as well, because I think that helps a lot customers to know which applications they can, they feel more comfortable in probably changing or finding the code. Great points. Yeah, um, so maybe Comprehend, uh, yeah, CloudWatch. Okay, yeah. and then you put it under an open source license. Let's just let's just put it under MIT, um, and then our README. We don't. We'll just use the default that they give you. Um, I think this one. To put no, we can just change it to the year. Some basic. Yeah. How's yeah, and I may take oh. this down later, but uh, because I want to publish it under AWS probably, but. Uh, but yeah, so we have a version, remember it was 1.0.0, our source, source code URL. Normally I would put the git tag, so again, we're just kind of doing this as a, uh, and then the SAM template. So just need my packaged SAM template that I have. Um, let me find my documents, and then... Here's my tweet sentiment app and that packaged YAML. So again, it has to be the packaged one. Um, and let's yeah. see that that bucket I submitted it to should have access. Uh, let's see. You should make it public because it's not the, the object that you publish is the app. The package is not public, so you need to make it public. I Otherwise thought it work. was. Let's see. No, when you when you actually did the package, so basically when you run some package that will automatically upload that your service application, your package, as a private package. So you will need to go to your object level and make it public unless you make the entire uh, bucket public, which is not in this case. Otherwise the You're S3 right. the S3 the S3 console would actually show you as a security so, concern. I don't like making buckets public. I don't think that that's great. But under publishing applications, it actually shows you. Uh, so under the serverless app repo documentation, it'll actually give you the exact bucket policy you need to set um, in order to allow the serverless repo to access objects in the bucket. So let me say uh, you need this. to change the, the, the placeholder, your bucket name in the policy. Oh, that's not what my bucket's called. <laughs> Just kidding. I can't believe these lights keep, keep switching off. I need to probably do a hack in there. Um, so by the way, in the meantime, James finishes that up and tried that again. I will just quickly explain what's happening behind the scenes is instead of actually opening the bucket, S3 bucket and all the objects of all your SAM packages to the wild, you can actually only give access to serverless application repo. So to per that particular object. Which what that means is if anyone actually goes now to the service application repo in the next few seconds or so, you will be able to deploy this application on your account and service application repo would be responsible to get the package from James S3 bucket and deploy on your account. And of course, then you could you know, do whatever you want with it. And essentially yep. next will be open sourcing the whole code and you'll be able to see that on GitHub, uh, but that will be next. Yeah, so we'll open source this as a sample, uh, the source code. In, a, in the meantime, um, this so adding that bucket policy did fix the problem. And I was able to deploy this tweet sentiment app uh, or publish it to the repo. And I went ahead and marked it as public. Let's see, sometimes it takes a couple minutes for this to show up in the public repo. Let's see if this so works. So what's the name tweet sentiment? Let me just give it a try on my account. I can actually yeah, see that right now. Uh, there's so a, if you actually give this a give this a try, everyone. See if you can see this application that James just. Yeah, published. it'll take a couple minutes. There's actually a a weird. Oh shoot. <laughs> it's actually it's actually live. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, it no, should no, be live. Perfect. There there might be a little weird issue with the README for a couple minutes, but it should be fine after that. Um, but yeah, this is live. So now if you go to the Lambda console. And I search for, and I go to create a function, and I say a serverless application repository. So here's Twitter event source. Um, there's the retweet leaderboard, and boom, there's tweet sentiment. It's there now. So now, if you wanted, 
um, you can, in your Lambda console, you can deploy tweet sentiment, and it'll deploy. You go find the function name that was created and copy that, and then you follow the readme instructions in Twitter event source, and you deploy the Twitter event source, and you'll have your own graphs coming up. Uh, where are my graphs? You'll have your own graphs coming up after that. So super That's cool. Awesome. I well, I think it's that. cool. <laughs> no, I, I actually find it pretty cool. Actually, let me ask you a question because I think some of the audience will ask later. What is the difference of you sending that CloudWatch metric directly from your code versus actually publishing as a, you know, printing the logs, using the logs, and then letting CloudWatch you look at a regex and publishing as a custom metric? Yeah, Maybe I should so rephrase that question. Yeah, great question. So that is called uh, CloudWatch metric filters. So you can log to CloudWatch logs, and then you can define metric filters to uh, to do a regex and convert that to a metric that goes to CloudWatch. So put metric data actually has a 150 TPS limit on the calls. So um, at very large scale, the metric filters will scale much uh, much higher than directly calling put metric data. Um, now, one drawback to using the, the metric filters is that metric filters are actually, um, they don't support dimensions, and they don't support percentile. So um, that is one limitation of them. In this case, I really wanted to use dimensions. Um, and I also wanted to just set up, uh, I, I wanted it, the code to all be in one place, so it was very clear what was yeah, happening. And then uh, let me think if there's one other thing. Uh, the other thing is that um, when you use put metric data, it's very flexible in adding um, new metrics, right? You just add the metrics to the call and you're done. With metric filters, you have to define a new filter for each metric. So it's a little bit more friction yeah. to adding new metrics as well. So there's pros and yeah. cons to each. Yeah. So if I were to recap, kind of a given advice would be, if you, if you don't really need percentiles on your metrics and you don't need dimension and you want to make sure that it scales as you add a lot of data into CloudWatch for later troubleshooting or monitoring or visibility, then you can actually use a feature called CloudWatch Subscription Filter, where basically you are creating a regex and saying, whatever my Lambda puts in the logs, because that gets streamed automatically without you doing anything, central logs for you out of the box, you can turn those logs, well, that data, that regex, into a metric. And that happens in async versus what James did, which is actually a synchronous call. And that lambda is waiting for that synchronous call to finish so it can return. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, and, um, and one more thing about this app being in the serverless application repository now. Um, so I put in the the search that it does on Twitter is configurable in the Twitter event source app. So I put in hashtag AWS Lambda. You don't have to put that in. You can put other things in. So these apps are now available out of the box for you to just, if you are curious about a certain Twitter search and what the current, uh, I mean, I didn't want to put it on here for the live stream, but I mean, there's, there are plenty of contentious discussions on Twitter. It would be very fun and very interesting to configure different searches and just see what, have kind of a visual of what the overall sentiment is for, yeah. for, different, uh, for, for different topics on Twitter. Um, so it's very, uh, so these apps are, not only have we shown you how to build an app, but we've also now published it and made it available so that it's just, just a useful app for people to use in general. Absolutely. I think in the meantime, we're finishing here. I just want to make one call out because there's still a lot of people in the stream. Remember when James and I discussed the idea that service application repository actually makes life so much easier in the sense that there's, there was no codes in, involved we actually doing the you know Twitter search and all these pieces. James actually is an app, and of course he built it in the past, but essentially he used that component to attach and actually make life much easier. What you could do if you want to make your first contribution to the service application repo and you're passionate about all this, and of course taking the vibe of Twitter search and everything, that metric we could actually make a single page application and publish that and actually look at those metrics that was you know, in case you use all those components together, you could actually have a single page app showing that metric that ingests them coming live. That could be yeah. a, that could be an idea. 
Yeah, that's a great idea. And once you start building these serverless apps, you start getting more and more ideas. And honestly, I know I'm like, I promise I'm not on the marketing team. I'm an SDE, I'm a software developer. <laughs> And I get really excited about this stuff because of the potential for accelerating development. Um, and and honestly, uh, and I've been at Amazon for coming up on nine years now, and I've worked in distributed systems for a long time. And there are these common patterns in distributed systems that uh, that I really feel we can package into these serverless apps. It's like developers all over the world have written these patterns over and over and over and over again. And if we can develop these as serverless applications that can be plugged together like components, then that can just accelerate everybody and make us able to really focus in that much more on our business logic. And then and on the what's what's valuable and the business ad of our logic. So I'm super excited about it. And that's one of the reasons I get on Twitch and get on uh, Twitter and, and talk about this stuff so frequently is because I see just huge potential in it. Absolutely. And to just close this out, uh, James, because this is built on servers, this is an advanced series for Twitch where we essentially you are giving your opinion on what the packages, what libraries, how user ID for Java development. What will be your advice or any suggestions or any comments for all those Java developers that are watching either live or later on YouTube uh, for Java development on servers? What will be your suggestion or pro tip? Let's put it this way. Yeah, so, well, my, my pro tip is I've been working in serverless for, for two years now. And my, my tip is just get going, get started because once you once you kind of figure out this whole SAM and now SAM CLI and SAM init helps you get started very quickly. Um, but once you get uh, you you figure out these tools and uh, and start them, there's just this extremely uh, this feeling of excitement and and empowerment at, at least for me anyway that you really feel like you can can do so much, and so uh, and and you can work faster and more efficiently and so. Um, my advice is really just get started. Just get started, get your hands dirty with this, um, play around with it, and hopefully this Twitch stream just gives you the full picture and end of how you go from nothing to a serverless application, and then we'll pu publish this source code so you can see it for yourself. Absolutely. So last question from the stream is that when do you kind of expect to see, to publish this to a GitHub repository and also update the app to make it to make it work for everyone. I, I know you're going for holidays tomorrow. Uh, uh -huh. so I guess in a couple of weeks or something. Yeah, it'll be in a couple of weeks, uh, probably. I mean, unless I can get somebody else to publish this um, source code, I'll definitely uh, I'll get the ball rolling on that. Sure, no problem. So for those of you who just watched, uh, were here with us, I sent you the link if you are interested in seeing the previous episodes. And also, this will be automatically streamed to YouTube. Go to our YouTube playlist in case you want to catch up with all the episodes of Build on Serverless. There's the next one that's coming up is on June 26, exactly the same time in the US, 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Uh, in UK time or 5 p.m. Central European time. Next episode will be about uh, Python, which is the second part of a simple crypto service where we're going to be adding a CI/CD to an existing project and exactly writing tests and all this kind of stuff. So tune in, thanks for watching. James, thank you so much for actually being here with us and for sharing all those nice tips about Java development. And we hope to see you in the next episodes as well. Yeah, it was super fun. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ator. No problem. Thanks everyone and have a great day.